If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know how versatile this next tool is for us here at our homestead. Good morning, Modern Steaders. This morning, I thought we'd continue on with our series of the tools we use for building our homestead. We seem to get a lot of good feedback and a lot of questions from the first video we did, so let's continue on with it. The tools that we're reviewing in this series are the tools that we used when we built our house here at our homestead and the tools that we use constantly when we're doing all of our DIY projects. Today, we're gonna to talk about four more. I know a lot of people like to get right into the power tools. They are fun, a little more exciting, but there's a lot of hand tools that you need that work side by side with your power tools. One of the first ones I'm gonna go over this morning is our combination square that we have here. I have this little six inch Johnson combination square. They make 12 inch ones. I find the six inch one is nicer for the what we use it for. I use it for a lot of drawing of lines and finding depths. I used it a lot for marking where we were gonna be cutting on our tongue and groove pine boards for our outlets when we were building our house. The nice thing about this is you can find your depth and you can lock it in place. And then if you need to know how deep you're going, you have your gauge. If you're setting up your table saw and you want to know how high to make if you're making a dado cut and you want to know how deep for your blade to go, it works really well for that. For setting up your skill saw, if you're moving your fence and you want to go a certain depth, it's great for that. We used it. I use it all the time when we're making furniture. When you're getting real fussy and finicky for the depth of your dado cuts. The Swanson ones has a nice brass lock nut with knurled grips on it which is nice. You tighten it up and it locks it in place. You loosen it and you can slide it. You can take it all the way out. It's spring loaded in there. Make sure your grooves lined up with that in there. Push it up. Slide it in. And then tighten the nut back up. It also comes with a brass, the little brass nut down here. You undo that. And it gives you a scribe so you can mark if you don't have your pencil, you can mark your line, which comes in handy. It's not always the funnest thing to use. Some people love using a handsaw. I'm usually trying to get stuff done fast around here. Not like super fast, but when I have a project, I want to get it done. So I don't use my handsaw for making all my cuts. But we always need a handsaw around. I use it, you guys saw it, I've used it for cutting foam. When you're using your jigsaw or your skill saw and you're making a square cut, you need something to finish off the notches for you. And just every once in a while you need a quick saw to grab because you don't want to bring your skill saw out with you, you don't want to bring your battery operated tools. You always need a handsaw. It's a great tool to learn how to use. I have the Urban Marathon 15 inch. It's a pretty fast cutting saw. A longer length saw would come in handy for some applications, but for what we use it for, the 15 inch one is nice. <clears throat> we have our jigsaw here, or if you don't want to be using your handsaw to make the final cuts and the notches, you can go to your jigsaw. But a jigsaw is very handy when you're cutting out outlets when you're cutting round holes or if you're going to make any cuts that have curves and contours to them. We have this DeWalt one. I've had this for many, many years. I was trying to think of when I bought it and what I bought it for. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but we have used it many times. It came in very handy when we were building our house. Our house inside is all V-grooved pine. So when we were putting all the pine up, we had to cut and notch out for all of our outlets, our windows. So the jigsaw was a go-to tool while we were building the house. We put wood flooring down, so if we had to cut out and notch out for our air vents, the jigsaw was the go-to tool. This is a DeWalt variable speed on the trigger, so you can make it go faster or slower. The plate, you can tilt it and angle it if you want to make a 45 degree cut. You can change the direction of your blade. If you move this lever right here, it shows you the positioning of the blade. It can kick it forward. On the DeWalt, it comes with the Allen head wrench. Loosen up your bolt 
and then it frees up your plate and you can make your adjustment for your angles. And it's got a little gauge on the back to let you know what angle you're on. Then you can tighten it up when you're on the angle you like. It's one thing you should remember to check, even if you just give it a quick eyeball every time you take it out, is make sure your plate is nice and straight. I have a lot of DeWalt tools, and the biggest reason for the DeWalt tools, they're a good tool, a fair price, and one of the things I really liked when I was buying them, they come with this nice, sturdy plastic case. Some people don't like the cases, they say they just throw them away. The way we use our tools and store them, the cases come in very handy. I also like having a case because it gives you a place to keep your extra blades. I found out the Bosch blades. Right now, I really like the Bosch blades. They give a good clean cut and they stay sharp for a while. I also like to keep a drill bit in my case that's the same size or bigger than my jigsaw blade. Because a lot of times when you got to start a cut, it's in the center of a board and you're cutting a circle or something, so you drill it out with your drill bit, then you have a place to start, put your blade in, turn it on, you can start your cut. And if you don't keep a drill bit with you, you're always looking for one. One little trick I like to do is, when you have a bunch of tools, they come in, a lot of the cases look the same, these aren't the same size, but they look the same size, let me grab one that's close. I got this one right here. It's not the exact same size as the jigsaw, but they're pretty close. When you got them by side by side, you don't remember which one's your jigsaw and which one's your drill, so you open it up every case. I just take a piece of tape, write the name on it, and that way when they're stacked up, I know which one they are. And if I'm asking Gina or Olivia to go grab my drill or my jigsaw, they can come down here in a quick glance know which one I'm asking for. If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know how versatile this next tool is for us here at our homestead. Our grinder. This has been a go tool, life saving tool. We've been using it to cut our vent pipes for our root cellar. We used it to cut the stove pipes for the outdoor kitchen. We used it for sanding and grinding. We used it for cutting the metal roof on the outdoor kitchen. This tool is invaluable, I believe. The grinder here, I got this in high school. We used to do Christmas swaps and we would try to buy each other tools or gifts that we would use. And this one was one that I got for the year. So I've had this 17, I've had this for 18 years now, almost 19 years, so I've used this tool quite a bit. It comes in very handy. Let's go through all the different uses for a grinder. Right now I have a thin cutoff wheel so you can cut metal. I've used this recently for cutting the ductwork in the root cellar. It's amazing how fast and a clean cut you can cut a round piece of pipe. Your other option is tin snips. If you've ever used tin snips, you know how much of a pain in the butt they are. For making a long cut, you're bending the metal, trying to get it out of your way. The cut doesn't come out straight. At least for me, it doesn't come out straight. It, it doesn't look nice. This gives you a nice professional cut, and it makes it look like you know what you're doing. And then when you're done cutting it, if the edges are sharp, you can switch over to a sanding disc. And you can sand the edges. Let's go through and I'll show you all the different attachments I have for our grinder. You can get wire wheels for your grinder. You can get wire cups. The wire cup you can use for cleaning up concrete. There's many uses if you got rust on a piece of metal and you're trying to get it off. You could use that. You could use a wire wheel for that stuff, getting it to tight places. You could get a wire wheel you don't have a bench grinder with a wire wheel and you need one, you could use this as a bench grinder, probably not the safest way, but if you need it, you need it. So that works out really good. You got your thin metal cutting discs and then you have a grinding disc, which is thicker.
We have different grit sandpaper. You get 80 grit, 80 grit, 36 grit, 20 grit. You can get really coarse with these things and you can really take off a lot of wood metal really fast with your grinder. They also make this style sanding disc. I don't know what they call it. One of the modern setters who came to the pig harvesting class gave me three different grits to try. I haven't been able to find them on Amazon. So Anthony, if you're watching the video, let me know where you got these grinding discs. They work awesome. Or if any other modern setters know where you can get this style sanding disc, grinding disc, leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to put a link in the video. These things really work great. While we were building the outdoor kitchen, like I was saying earlier, we used it for cutting the metal roofing, we used it for cutting the stove pipe, I used it for cleaning up some of my notches when I was making my uh, tennis and mordens. I could clean up the notches and get it really nice, quick, without having to use a chisel, because I don't got a big, fancy, slick chisel. So I would just take my grinder with a sanding disc on it and sand everything nice and flat, and it worked good. For a while I was making log furniture, like if you go to Cabela's, you see like the headboards and stuff. And they got like the round little branches going into the big ones and you got a narrow tapered small spindle going up to a hole. I was using my grinder to make a lot of that. I don't have any of the furniture. When we moved, the furniture we had, we ended up giving away. I wish I had pictures of it. <sighs> We're not very good at taking pictures. We got to get better with that. But this... But a grinder, there's so many uses for a grinder, it's invaluable. You can cut sand just about anything with a good grinder. One thing to be aware of on your grinder, if you're using different wheels, sanding discs, there's different, there's different ways to attach them. So for our cutoff wheel, we have this lock nut, and it comes with a wrench. And you have a backer that you need to put on the back side. On your grinding wheel, it's the same thing. You're going to attach it the same way. On this style sanding disc, it's threaded. So there's a, ours has a button on the back side you push in and that locks the head. If not, it can just free wheel on you. So you push your button, spin it until it locks, and hold it in place. So this style, you can just screw right on. There's no lock nut or anything else. Same thing on our wire wheel. It's got a threaded nut on it. The one that's the big difference is if we're using a sanding disc. We got a back end plate. We put that on first, put our sanding disc in place, and grab our lock washer. That's meant, it's tapered, so it's meant to fit in place. Hold the sandpaper in place and suck it down. And you can either just spin the sandpaper to tighten it up, but it also comes with a wrench. I find it more convenient just to hand tighten it. To take it off, it's the same thing. Push your button in and loosen it up. On the sanding disc, you're gonna have to buy this separately. Your grinder's not gonna come with it. My grinder came with this lock nut and backing plate. And when I was buying the sandpaper for it, I bought just the sandpaper the first time. I was like, how is this gonna work? You gotta buy the kit that comes with the backing plate and the lock nut not very expensive. When I got this tool I want to say it was around 80 to 100 bucks. I think nowadays you can still get them for around the same price. I'll put a link in the description down below that will bring you to an Amazon page that will have all the products that we've been talking about today on that page. One last thing that most of the grinders come with is a handle. They thread the grinder on both sides so if you're right handed or left handed you just screw your handle in. Having the handle in gives you more control over the grinder and it makes it so you can put more pressure when you're grinding.
there's a certain tool you'd like me to review, leave it in the comments down below. We'll make sure we get it in the next video, if we have it. The tools we are reviewing are tools that we have here at our homestead and the tools that we've used to build our homestead in our ongoing and future DIY projects. We have a lot of tools, but the tools that we have I don't think are anything like out of the ordinary that the average person could buy. I know they're not because we don't have anything extraordinary. They're just regular tools and we use them and we built our homestead here with them. So if it's something you're looking to do, you can do it and you don't need to have huge extravagant tools. There are tools you'll need, but there's not anything that's just like mind blowing or oh that's a super expensive tool. They're all fairly decent priced. If there's a specialty tool, you probably don't need it to do that one project. It's something else or another way you can go at it to get the same thing done. A lot of these tools too you can find at yard sales, flea markets, you can find them on eBay. There's a lot of places you can find these tools second hand for a good price. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.